do you who do you have on the staff to elevate? Or if you don't elevate somebody, I mean, you're just do you bring in a fight. Mike McCarthy uh, right they now? They should have hired Mike McCarthy from should've the get-go. Should have hired Mike McCarthy from the I don't get-go. understand that. I do think it has to be reevaluated. <clears throat> yeah, and, and then and here's the other here's the other issue. You never hire. Here's my issue, my rule. You never hire the player player's favorite guy. Right. You never right. hire the player's favorite guy. And so I was having this conversation with somebody last night. I said, so, are, if we agree Dorsey botched this search, then who do you let run the next search? Because you don't oh. want Haslam to run the next search because Haslam's botched like three or four up to now. So NFL teams don't hire search firms to go out and hire coaches. Uh, they identify people like here's your candidate, but then you got to trust the people in your front office to hire them, and you should because if they can't work with you, you don't want to hire them. They do hire professionals to to help them to identify, help them, yeah, but then, then, I mean, then you got to hire them. You yeah. got to sit down with them and find out, like, yeah, this guy I can work with, or this this guy, no, I can't work with this guy. You might want to get like like a search firm and get like five guys, yeah. and you make it so they do all the legwork and stuff, but. I, I think Mike McCarthy was the perfect fit. I, 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 I that's the one question. I, I like John. I think he's he has made some good decisions. I think he was negligent on the offensive line, which Big is, time. Big you time. know, it's just not happening for them. But again, uh, I, I don't think it's time to panic or quit and see how they finish. And like everybody in every NFL team, at the end of the year, you sit down, you do a total evaluation, and. You make decisions, okay, or do we stay the course? Are we heading in the right direction? If we're not, what are we going to do to fix it? And, you know, I I do think that he jumped the gun and got charmed by Freddie. I'm not saying Freddie can't be a good co- coach one day. Well, in Dorsey's defense, if... the offense looked great last year with, with Kitchens it, running. It, it looked great. It did. It did, but... It's maybe he's one of those guys that is like a North Turner that is a great coordinator or has the reputation of being a great coordinator, play caller, gets along with the players, but he's not a head coach guy. It might be. I'm mean, here's Freddie Kitchens defending himself. Uh, it sounds a lot like he's talking about the Cleveland version of Murphy's Law. Did run it well. I agree. I feel bad for him in the sense that he's not the one jumping off sides. He's not the one turning it over. But there's mm-hmm. enough of the other stuff that, you know, is not solid decision making. And there's enough responsibility there that bleeds over to him for the undisciplined nature of the team. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. he's responsible yeah. for that though, right? <clears throat> yeah. And his, yeah. you know, you don't get the message across. How many times were the were the Patriots penalized for uh, four self induced pe- four uh, four for no, thirty two? I'm not talking oh, for that like, stuff. Yeah, you know, like physical. For no, you don't jump. The they had one guy jump. jumped off sides, a defensive end. They yeah. had one guy jump off sides, and and Romo said, "Can you do that again?" He's out. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. they've cut guys who fumbled before. After, like, a guy had, like, a hundred and some yard night on Monday Night Football, he fumbled the next game, gone. Yeah. I'm... So, and again, there's a limit to that. I mean, he's not going well, to cut yeah. Brady if he fumbles. No. But, you know, yeah. it's just. It's, it depends on who you are. Yeah. But, I mean, you send a message. I said with Antonio Callaway a couple weeks ago, I said, I cut him. I cut him. He, he, he comes back, and, and you, you told him before, last chance. Oh, no, we'll give you another chance. Four games for substance abuse or PDs or whatever it was. Then he comes back, first game, drops a pass, and hands it to the other team. I said I'd cut him to send a message to everybody on the team. We're not putting up with this garbage. Yeah. Oh, he's too talented to cut, Bruce. Really? What are they this season? Two and five? How much difference is he making? He's not, well, he's not one of your two best wide receivers, and you can usually find a number three. He's not one of their three best. Rashard Higgins their third best wide receiver. And cut him. There you go. Cut him. Go. How about the Bengals, Bruce? Uh, a Cooper Cup is good. This is news <laughs> to Zach Taylor, who apparently uh, didn't see Cooper Cup last year with the Rams. Seven catches, 220. 
But the Bengals did get the rushing game going, 22 for 104. So maybe there's hope as they uh, enter there's their no off week hope. with the Ravens. In their, Are you kidding in their me? Future. Are you no, just I'm, saying I'm that? Trying, I'm, yes, I'm just saying. Would you rather be a Browns fan or a Bengals fan right now? I, I would rather be an Ohio State fan. <laughs> <clears throat> There's that's easier, isn't re- it? There's reward that's, in that. That's much easier. Much, much easier. All right. Uh, we always end the podcast with a faith element. I want to thank our friends at West Jefferson Plumbing and Heating for sponsoring the faith element of the podcast. And for all of you for responding uh, so positively on the faith uh, aspect of the podcast. Here's our review of the day. It comes from Ted. He says, this is one of the best podcasts I've ever heard. The football talk and the life information from the Bible study is making me review my life as well. Thanks to both of you from a former Tiger now a bulldog fan, lol. Blood is thicker than water. Was that That's being masculine did he tiger. Marry, did he marry a Canton McKinley bulldog? Oh, hey, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, Ted. Well, you have to explain yourself. When you become a husband, there's sacrifices that you have to make. <laughs> That's right. Uh, West Jefferson Plumbing and Heating, servicing all of Central Ohio. Six one four eight seven nine nine six zero six with awesome Lennox high efficiency products. Uh, West Jeff can do all your plumbing needs, new construction, you name it, they can do it. Repair. They'll show up on time every time. West Jefferson Plumbing and Heating on the web at westjeffplumbingandheating.com. Any, any emails at all this week or not? Uh, we did have a, a couple of emails thanking us for answering the previous emails, and we'll save the uh, other emails for okay. Wednesday okay. because today's my wife's birthday. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to wish her a very happy birthday, and I was in my prayer time this morning just thanking God for Sherry and uh, for the miracle of how I met her. Uh, we met online, which I wouldn't recommend. Farmers to on teenage farmers kids. only? No, not on farmers only. <laughs> Christianmatchmaker.com. But I, uh, we, she was, uh, you know, she was 30 when I met her. Yeah, I was 40. Much younger than you, yes. So it's not like we were teenagers dating online. So that's what I'm saying, kids. Okay. Don't date online. <laughs> unless you're 40 and 30. Then you know what <laughs> you want. Then it's okay. Yeah. Then you know what you want. But I was reflecting back on the very first time I saw her and how intrigued I was by what I saw and what I read about her online. And I invested all of my time in knowing everything I could about her because I wanted to further that. Before you met her? No, no, no. I mean, like that's like stalker stuff. No, no, no. I mean, like as we as we got to know each other, okay, phone calls, emails, then meeting together and all that. Every time I was with her, I wanted to know more about her. I wanted to invest in knowing more about her because I wanted to cultivate a lifelong relationship with her. And as her husband, Plus that's your nature too, <clears throat> as a, a, a reporter, somewhat I mean, inquisitive person. Yeah. yeah. But as a husband, I have, and I was determined to not let that determination to know her uh, diminish as I got to know her. But you know what? It, it, at times it has, and I feel bad about that. And I have tried here in the last few years to really redouble my efforts to continue. To get to know her because I remember vividly my father uh, one time after he and my mom had been married 50 years I said hey dad when did you get to the point with mom where she could no longer surprise you anymore like you knew her so well you knew everything about her and I still remember the look on my dad's face and he looked at me and he goes Bruce <laughs> there are still times where I look at her and I go who are you <laughs> And that's the mystery, the miracle of, a, of, of love between a man and a woman. And so as I equate it to a relationship that, you know, we hopefully are all striving to build with Jesus Christ as our Savior, you have to invest that effort in a daily in a relationship with your wife, with your kids, with your Savior. You can't just, you wouldn't have married your wife, guys, if you spent an hour a week with her. And while you were with her at dinner, you were checking your phone for football scores or whatever. So if you're in church and the only effort you're investing in knowing more about God is the hour a week that you spend in church, guess what? Your relationship's not going to be what it could be. If you're checking your fantasy football lineup while you're sitting there and the pastor's talking or whatever, you got to put more effort into your relationship so that you have a relationship because you just have an acquaintance if you see... If you invest one hour a week in knowing God, that's how I equate the two, because the two most important relationships in my life are uh, with Christ and with my wife. Okay, beautiful and happy birthday, Sherry. So what, what what I've come across is we give this experiences that we have, Mm -hmm. things that we try to do. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we strive to it. We do it sometimes. We fall short. But I think one of the blessings is the recognition of falling short and to get back on track as mm -hmm. opposed to just saying, oh, well, well, I fell short there, so I'm giving up. No, to get right back on track. So what would be some of the suggestions that you would give not only our, our male listeners, but even our female listeners about investing in their husbands? What what suggestions, what did you do? You, you said, I did everything to get to know her. Did you sit there and hit her with 20 questions? Did you... No, uh, actually... Uh, did Actually, you go the, Google her. And no, I listened. Google I, invented the, back the then. The number or? one thing that I did was I listened. You know, just listen mm -hmm. and uh, find out. You know, what she responds to in terms of like most guys want to fix. I found out early on that uh, offering my solutions to things that she would talk about at her work or you know her friendships and stuff that weren't to where she wanted them. She didn't want me to fix. She just wanted me to listen. And I think that's a common thing with, with uh, men and women. A lot of times, and, and now there will even be times where we have a conversation and I will say to her, do you want me to offer a solution or you just want me to listen? Okay. Um, that, that's a really good way to go about it because my, I do think you, you listen. Then I do say, I have an opinion on that. Mm -hmm. I said, we, and I say this with Carrie, my wife, now all the time. Look, the best way for me to make a decision is we gather all the information that we can. Then you make a decision based off of information or other opinions on how to approach it. Then I'll make that decision. Now, it's easier for us to come to that point because of a blended family, mm -hmm. right? And so in a blended family, at least our rule is that if there's an issue with her kids, she takes the lead. I offer my solution or my opinion. If it's with my kids, I take the lead, but she'll offer her input. Then the decisions are made. But I, I think you're exactly right, uh, Bruce, into like any relationship, the most valuable thing you can give somebody is your time. And there are many times, and I'm sure from the wise perspective, there's many times where this, oh, I don't want to do this with him tonight. You know, I really mm -hmm. don't. I mean, I, I just, I just tired. I want some, you know, whatever candles in a bath. I know that sounds somewhat sexist, but you know, well, they're like uh, Sherry just, likes to just go to a room and read. Yeah, just, just quiet, a quiet time. time. Yeah, just, just alone time. Yeah. But you know, there might be a time where, um, she knows that you need her, even though at that time it's just human nature where I don't want to. You know, I don't want to mm -hmm. get involved with whatever issue he's fighting right now. But I know that he needs me. So one of the things that I find is the most uh, important tool in our toolbox to use in relationships, and it all stems from God and what God did, it's sacrificial giving. It's easy to give when, it do, when it's not an inconvenience. Yeah, out of your abundance. It's yeah, easy to it, give it's that. It's easy to give out of your abundance. So this can go to tithing, to relationships, or whatever. What builds and strengthens bonds, in, in because we have the best example in the history of the world about sacrificial giving. So if we can look at God and say, okay, what's the sacrificial gift was Christ? And so we benefit from that. Mm -hmm. So that's just another example that we can use and put it into our own lives, whether it's, it's investment of sacrificial giving to your wife or to your children. And I'm going to say this, and uh, I, I might, some people might not dis might disagree with this, but as the husband and the father, you are called to lead your household, to be the example, to be the sacrificial giver, to be the spiritual leader. And that's a responsibility that you have to own. Yep. Now you can say that's true or not true in my world and in my life. I take that responsibility very seriously. And it doesn't mean I'm like, oh, king of the castle. No, it's the, that I have to set the example for everybody in my house to be the one that's the sacrificial giver. And, and it's, it, you know, we can go back um, that, you know, you think of when you go through difficult times or you feel like you're not, the needs aren't being met or you're not being served. I think we need to step step back and look behind us and look at all the times our, our we have been served and our needs 
have been met. But just the, I think that's the big takeaway for me today. And I want and everybody, men, women, be a sacrificial giver. And when you do that, you'll you'll realize how much you're actually being served when you are a sacrificial giver. Yeah, because it'll inspire others to do the same. Yeah, and but it's a but wonderful and, and, cycle. And yeah, yeah, it is, and it's and it it's uh, the the beautiful thing about it. It starts from God, and who set the prime example, the only example of sacrificial giving. Absolutely. Uh, Wednesday, we'll pursue more of the likelihood of whether Chase Young can win the Heisman Trophy, and uh, I'm sure the Browns will have news as they get ready to head to Denver. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. Please share it with your friends. Go to pleasereviewmypodcast.com backslash Spielman and Hooley to review it. Even if you've reviewed it before, those reviews really do help us. Everybody have a great day.